everybody, welcome back to the channel. So I get a common question that comes in emails and in the comment section from a lot of different people and that question is, Jimmy, how do you pick stocks to day trade? And I thought about this and I, I thought, well, it's not that difficult, but it's surprising how many times I get that question. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to pick stocks to day trade this isn't long-term investing, this isn't even swing trading, this is just day trading. And I'm gonna break it down for you in four tips or tricks, okay? So let's dive into this. Oh, by the way, if you feel like it and you wanna join our channel for a membership, you'll get access to a private Slack channel and membership-only videos. If you wanna join our free Facebook group, there's a link in the description and on the banner. You can come join us over there. And if you're not a subscriber, I'd love to have you stick around, so hit the subscribe button and the like button if you like the content. All right, let's dive in. So a lot of you know that I trade AMD. You can evaluate any, st any stock at all. And because of the thumbnail, I'm gonna break down Palantir and I'm gonna show you if it's in fact a great stock to day trade. Now this doesn't mean that a technical pattern is showing up, you're getting a breakdown or a, a moving average crossover. All those things are great, but those come in later. You first have to find candidates based on certain criteria before you ever get to all of the ascending wedges and death crosses and all those. You have to find candidates that actually fit the picture because I tell you what, you don't wanna trade a momentum breakout on Ford or Bank of America. Those stocks just don't quite fit the criteria I'm looking for and I'm gonna show you what those are right now. So let's dive into Number one, my first criteria for picking a stock to day trade, and let's just, you know what, we'll save Palantir for a minute. Let's start with AMD. What I do first of all is I open it up in my platform. I'm using Thinkorswim right now. You can use any platform, but I come up here and, okay, you see this B and this A? That's the bid and the ask, or the bid and the offer. Sometimes the ask is called the offer. Now that's where sellers are selling shares. The bid is where you're trying to buy shares. They're bidding to buy the shares. Now, if you have a large bid ask spread, basically what that means is if you were to buy something, um, say it's a dollar wide, instead of being four pennies wide, let's say it's 75 by 76. Now, let's say you happen to get a fill in the middle at 75.50. Well, immediately, there's nobody there who would be willing to buy that share from you. They're going to be on one of the other ends. They're not gonna be floating around in the middle of the bid and the ask. So what you have to remember is, if you have a large bid ask spread, the minute you buy a stock, you might already be down most of the spread. Now, if you have a tight bid ask spread, like a couple of pennies wide, it makes it very easy to transact it back and forth. Stocks that tend to be more liquid, have more people interested, higher volumes, more people buying and selling across the bid and the ask, that tightens it down to within just a couple of pennies. And that is criteria number one. I only day trade stocks that have a bid ask spread of five cents or less. Now, it can fluctuate, like when the market opens, you know, it might go from a couple pennies to 10 cents to seven cents to three. It might fluctuate a little bit right off the open. But consistently, you want to watch a stock and say, okay, if I check this a few times throughout the day, is it going to be 10 cents wide, 20 cents wide, or is it going to be nice and tight? Now, AMD is typically only a few pennies wide. If you check it at 10 o'clock AM or 10.30 AM on any given day, you're likely going to see 75.15 by 75.16 or 17. This, it's closed right now, so I don't know that this is completely accurate but you want to watch the bid ask spread because you don't want to buy shares and then immediately only be able to sell to someone who's 50 cents lower because the, the bid ask spread is 50 cents wide. You buy on one end, sell on the other. And there's sometimes not a lot in between unless the market moves. So if it stays where it is and you jump in and you end up getting a fill somewhere in the middle or on one end, in order to get out of their sh those shares immediately, you would have to go to the other end of the spread to get rid of them. So you wanna make sure it's a very tight and narrow bid ask spread. That's criteria number one. Now, if we dive into criteria number two, which is just the average volume for the day, how much does this stock do 
volume wise on any given day. And you might say, well, how do I get the average? Well, you can just flip over to our friend finviz.com and let's type in AMD. This is free, it'll show you ads, so sometimes you have to turn off little ads. But if you come down here, you can very quickly see a lot of information about AMD. And one of those things is, in fact, average volume. So you can see that on average, AMD does 44 million shares in a day. And that's hilarious because my criteria is to try to find a stock that does more than a million shares a day in average, in average traded volume. So AMD clearly fits the bill there. And that makes it very liquid. That means a lot of people are, are exchanging shares, which can bring that bid ask spread nice and tight. So look for stocks that have an average volume of no less than a million shares in a day. That's what I do. That's helped me out. And it's very easy to find if you just go to something like finviz.com. Now, moving on to step number three or tip number three, I like to evaluate the stock's average true range. So if you want to trade a stock and you're having a certain setup where maybe your stop loss happens to be 50 cents, you don't want the stock's average true range to only be 50 cents. And when I say average true range, that just means, and let me bring you, uh, let's go uh, ATR at Investopedia, and let's just give you an exact definition of what average true range happens to be. So the average true range, according to Investopedia, it says that it's taken as the greatest of the following, the current high less the current low, the absolute value of the current high less the previous close, and the absolute value of the current low less the previous close. The ATR is then a moving average, generally using 14 days of the true ranges. So it's basically saying over the last 14 days, what's the average high and low, and that establishes a range. So you can call it the average true range. So let's dive into that. If you come back to your Thinkorswim platform, you can do something like this. Come to studies, edit studies, type ATR, and double click this. You'll see 14, that's that 14 period or 14 day moving um, range that's going to average together. Click apply and okay. And then flip to your daily chart because if you stay on the five minute, it'll do the last 14 five minute candles. We want it to do the last 14 daily candles. So now we'll come all the way back. So let's say I was getting ready to trade AMD and I wanted to trade AMD this past Friday. So what I would be looking at is the candle the day before Friday. Before Friday open, I'd be hovering this candle and let me move myself out of the way. So if you look down in this corner right here, when I hover fr uh, the day before Friday, I can see that the average true range is $2.82. Meaning from the high to the low, it could be moving up as much as $2.82. Now if I hover Friday, what can I expect from Monday? $2 and almost 79 cents. So I know between the high and the low that we'll probably get somewhere in the neighborhood of $2.79 of price movement. Now just to show you something different, let's bring something like Let's look at Tesla. So for Tesla, if I hover Friday, you can see the ATR of Tesla is $33.92. So this just gives you information in terms of stop loss calculations, how much room to give a stock to move around when you're trading at intraday, because an intraday trade could be five minutes, it could be three hours, all within that day. And the day's playground is the average true range. Tesla's playground for Monday will be somewhere in the neighborhood of $33.92. It doesn't mean it has to move that far. It just means that's its average. That's what you can possibly expect. So let's tuck me back in the corner here and let's move on to my final topic, which is, and this is sort of the kicker. You can also then on top of all this, look for stocks that have some sort of popularity or news. A lot of hype around them. So if you're, like examples would be something like, like Neo. When Neo was really hot, things were going crazy. Or like GameStop or AMC or any of the meme stocks or maybe a company comes out with a big 
announcement about something or they beat earnings really big or they miss earnings really, really big, that is excess news or extra X factor to that stock that makes it maybe a little more interesting to trade. Now, I trade AMD every day, but AMD has very liquid, high volume, a nice average true range, and I feel like AMD just kind of pops around in the news. I think everyone's kind of aware of AMD. It's a popular stock. So uh, my recommendation is to find a stock that's sort of relevant and in the news and something that people know. Like, let's do, let's do a little something here. Let's go to Finviz, and let's just go ahead and look at the home screen. Now, what I'm guessing we don't want to do is something like this. Say you come in, you click a screener, you're looking at stocks, you say, okay, I want lots of volume. Let me filter by volume. And okay, let's see, we've got lots of volume. I need a million shares, so maybe you maybe you come over here and you look for something with a million shares. And let's just go out a few. Let's get in the weeds here. So you find something, you say, okay, okay, we got a million shares. Let's do it right here. I like this one. Agora, API, let's do this. This this is our stock for the day. This would probably be a bad idea because I've never heard of this stock. Has anyone heard of Agora Inc.? You know, like you want to make sure that you find a stock that's sort of relevant, like a DraftKings, Tesla, Square, stocks that have been moving around and, and getting into the news. Those are just great candidates because they have some oomph behind them. So make sure, sorry about that, that you're getting into stocks that have maybe a little bit of news, something that's helping them move maybe a little more than their average true range if the day tends to be kind of a hot day. So as I promised, I wanted to show you Palantir. I put it on the thumbnail, I'm gonna show you, is Palantir a great stock to day trade? Let's look it up. So we go to PLTR, and we look at Palantir, and let's take a peek here. What's it got going? Bid ask spread, 2005 by 2007. Does that qualify, is that five cents or less? It is, so that we can check that box off. So, step one, we meet the criteria, all right? Step two, we wanna know the average volume. So let's pop back over. Let's go to FinBiz and let's type in PLTR and let's look down here. Average volume, 85 million shares. Way more than AMD, so perfect. 85 million shares, great volume, tight bid ask spread, super liquid, meaning I can get in and out without having to jump across that bid ask spread and lose money. And next thing coming up is gonna be our average true range. So I'm gonna slide over here and let's look at Palantir's average true range. We're on the daily chart because we wanna measure the daily average range. I'm gonna hover Friday. Average true range of Palantir right now is $1.48, we'll call it. So that means that if you're going to be trading this stock, I'm not gonna to wanna to have a stop loss that's $1.50 or even $1.25. You're gonna be looking for stuff less because you need to get multiples of your R value in order to make money in day trading. So you know that a $1.50 stop loss isn't going to work. You're going to have to be a little smaller than if you're trading something like, say, Tesla. You remember, 33 and change was Tesla's range or Tesla's playground. Palantir's playground, $1.48, really good information to know. And finally, is Palantir in the news? Yes. Palantir has been all over the news because it's been a semi-meme stock. People have been talking about it everywhere. People hate the stock. People love the stock. People are in. People are out. It's going to crash. It's going to the moon. It's all over the place. So Palantir has a lot of emotion attached to it. People are very interested in it. And then you come through this recent drawdown we've had where Palantir has dropped and anyone who's been investing in it is probably down. So it's just kind of in the news. And then it had earnings and it actually had good earnings. So people are talking about it constantly. You can go on YouTube and just type in day trading and then type in May 2021. Any stocks you see on there, those are probably all gonna qualify as popular and in the news, which would make them great day trading candidates. So then you could reverse engineer it. You could take a popular stock off of YouTube, go look at its volume, look at its average true range, and look at its bid-ask spread. If all four boxes get checked, 
you're good to go. You can dive in and you can start looking for setups like your death crosses, your, your love crosses, your moving average flips and flops, all the different patterns. You can do all that once you have a good candidate. So drop a comment below if this helped at all. Let me know how you evaluate stocks. I'd love to hear about it. And until next time, keep your bid ask spread tight. Talk to you later.